Welcome to my channel American News Hub. Subscribe to my channel for news updates all around the world. Imagine a beautiful island, Amami Oshima, a jewel in Japan's Pacific. From above it looks like a paradise untouched by time, its emerald forests stretching to the horizon surrounded by the endless blue of the sea. This is a place where nature's beauty is overwhelming where every sunrise paints the sky in gold and every breeze carries the scent of wildflowers and salt. Its forests are lush, the air alive with rare birds and streams teeming with life. The songs of the island's unique wildlife echo through the trees, and the crystal clear waters nourish both the land and its people. Here, the natural world is vibrant and ever-present, a living tapestry of green and blue. For centuries people here lived in harmony with nature, farming, fishing, and respecting the spirits of the land. Generations of families have called Amami home, their lives shaped by the rhythms of the seasons and the bounty of the earth and sea. Traditions run deep, and every harvest, every catch is a celebration of coexistence with the wild. But paradise had a shadow, the habu, a venomous pit viper, perfectly camouflaged and deadly. Lurking in the undergrowth, the habu is a master of disguise, its presence felt even when unseen. Its bite is swift, its venom potent, and its reputation legendary among the islanders. Islanders learned caution early, every rustle in the leaves could mean danger. Children are taught from a young age to tread carefully, to listen for the subtle warning signs that a habu might be near. The fear is woven into daily life shaping how people move, work, and even play. Farmers especially risked bites in the fields, at night families secured their homes, protective boots and careful routines became essential. After dusk, doors and windows are shut tight, and every shadow is eyed with suspicion. The threat of the habu is never far from anyone's mind. The habu was more than a snake, it was a symbol of nature's untamable side, a constant threat. Its presence was a reminder that, for all their efforts, the people of Amami could never fully control the wildness around them. Fear became a silent companion, shaping the island's culture and stories. Each year hundreds suffered bites. The local clinics and hospitals were always prepared for emergencies but the pain and panic that followed a bite were all too real. For many the fear of the habu was not just a story, it was a lived experience. Anti-venom helped, but injuries and trauma lingered. Recovery could take weeks or months, and the scars, both physical and emotional, often lasted a lifetime. The community rallied around victims, but the shadow of the habu loomed large. Some victims were left disabled, unable to work or live as before. The loss was not just personal but communal, families struggled, and the island's way of life was threatened by every injury. The cost, medical and psychological, was immense. Bills piled up, and anxiety became a constant presence in many households. The fear of the habu seeped into every aspect of life from finances to family bonds. Islanders felt trapped, living under siege by a reptilian army. The once vibrant streets would empty at dusk, and the sense of isolation grew as people withdrew indoors, wary of what might be lurking outside. They longed for a solution, a way to reclaim their island from fear. Community meetings were filled with hope and determination, as neighbors came together to share ideas and support one another. The spirit of Amami was strong, even in the face of adversity. The Habu problem was not just about fear, it was a public health crisis. Local leaders and health workers searched for answers, determined to protect their people and preserve their way of life. The world beyond Amami began to take notice, as the island's struggle became a symbol of resilience. The people of Amami needed hope, and in the face of danger they found it in each other, in their courage, their traditions, and their unwavering belief that even the darkest shadow can be overcome by the light of a new day. The Habu was once just one part of a balanced ecosystem, living quietly among the dense forests and sharing its home with a remarkable variety of creatures. For centuries the forests of Okinawa and the Amami Islands thrived, their intricate web of life undisturbed. Native wildlife like the elusive Amami rabbit and rare birds such as the Amami jay had evolved alongside the habu. Over generations these animals developed keen senses and unique behaviors to avoid the snake's deadly strike, maintaining a delicate balance in the wild. But everything changed when humans began clearing vast stretches of forest to make way for sugarcane plantations. The loss of trees and undergrowth disrupted the natural order, allowing rats to multiply rapidly in the new farmlands. With more prey available the habu population also exploded, 
The snakes, once hidden deep in the forest, started venturing closer to the edges of villages and farms, drawn by the abundance of food and the changing landscape. Encounters with people became more frequent, and so did the number of dangerous bites. Rural communities, unaccustomed to such risks, found themselves living in fear of the venomous intruder. The habu soon became a menace, threatening not only the health of villagers but also the local economy. Farmers worried about their crops, and the cost of medical care for snakebite victims soared. Native animals suffered as well. With the snake population out of control, creatures like the amami rabbit faced new dangers, and many species struggled to survive. The delicate balance that once protected rare species began to unravel, habitats degraded and the intricate relationships that sustained the ecosystem were breaking down. The habu, now acting as a super predator, was out of control, its reign unchecked, its appetite threatening everything in its path. The situation grew dire. Island communities once peaceful were now gripped by anxiety, knowing they needed a solution before it was too late. Science and government were called upon for answers. Researchers, officials and wildlife experts gathered to discuss strategies and search for hope amid the crisis. The fight against the slithering invasion had to begin, a battle not just for human safety, but for the survival of the island's unique and precious wildlife. Desperate, the people of Amami tried everything, snake catching, bounties, community hunts, but the habu reproduced too quickly, efforts barely made a dent, scientists sought a permanent biological solution, a natural enemy to hunt the habu, the idea of biological pest control was appealing, introduce a predator that loves to eat snakes, researchers searched for the perfect candidate tough, adaptable, and a proven snake killer. The small Asian mongoose, famed for battling cobras, was chosen. Quick, agile, and fearless, it seemed the perfect weapon. The plan import mongooses and release them on Amamioshima. The islanders hoped their new guardians would reclaim the island. The stage was set for a bold ecological experiment, no one foresaw the consequences. In 1979, 30 mongooses arrived on Amami, hailed as saviors. Released into the forest, they were expected to hunt Habu immediately. But there was a flaw, habu are nocturnal, mongooses are active by day. Their paths rarely crossed, a critical oversight. More mongooses were introduced and they thrived in the new environment. With no natural predators, their numbers grew rapidly. Islanders watched, hoping for fewer snakes and bites. Occasionally, a mongoose killed a snake, small victories celebrated. The government pressed on, confident in their decision. But beneath the surface a new ecological story was unfolding. The Mongoose Brigade was here to stay. The true cost was yet to be revealed. Early optimism swept Amami. Stories spread of fewer snakes and safer nights. The Mongoose was hailed as a hero. But scientific data told a different story. Mongooses rarely hunted habu, they preferred easier prey. The island's unique ground-dwelling animals, like the Amami rabbit, became targets. Ground-nesting birds, lizards, frogs, and the Ryukyu long-haired rat all fell victim. The mongoose meant to kill snakes was decimating native wildlife. Despite warning signs the project continued, mongoose numbers soared. The habu population remained largely unaffected and snake bites did not decrease. The original problem persisted, but a new one was growing. The ecosystem was unraveling. The false dawn faded replaced by a long, dark day. The solution had become a disaster, Amami's paradise was slipping away. By the early 2000s the mongoose population had exploded to 10,000. The hoped-for control of the habu never materialized. Instead, native species like the Amami rabbit and jay neared extinction. Ground-dwelling lizards and frogs vanished from entire regions. The mongoose with no natural enemies devastated Amami's unique wildlife. The ecosystem, once vibrant, was collapsing. Even insect populations surged as their predators disappeared. The introduction of one species triggered a catastrophic chain reaction. Islanders now faced two pests, the habu and the mongoose. The animal meant to save them, had become a villain. The lesson was clear. Interfering with nature without understanding can lead to disaster. Amami was in chaos, a warning to the world. The cost of a simple solution was immense. The mongoose's impact rippled through the ecosystem. By wiping out lizards and frogs they unleashed insect population explosions. Plants suffered as unchecked insects damaged native flora. Native raptors like the Ryukyu serpent eagle now competed with mongooses for food. Even the soil changed, 
burrowing animals vanished, reducing soil fertility. The mongoose was not a surgical strike but a sledgehammer. The ecosystem was battered and impoverished. Amami's natural web was torn apart. The damage was profound and far-reaching. By the mid-2000s, the government recognized the urgent need to address the ecological crisis caused by invasive mongooses. In response, they launched a massive mongoose eradication program, one of the largest wildlife management efforts in the region's history. The goal was clear, restore balance to the island's fragile ecosystem and protect its unique native species from extinction. Hundreds of dedicated staff and passionate volunteers worked tirelessly, setting thousands of traps across dense forests and remote valleys. Specially trained sniffer dogs were brought in to help track the elusive mongooses, making the operation more effective and efficient. Every day, teams braved challenging terrain and unpredictable weather, determined to make a difference. The process was slow and painstaking, requiring constant vigilance and careful monitoring. Progress was measured in small victories, each captured mongoose meant hope for the island's future. Over time, the relentless effort began to pay off. As mongoose numbers steadily declined, signs of recovery appeared. Native wildlife, once driven to the brink, began to return to their ancestral habitats. The forest echoed again with the sounds of life. The elusive Amami rabbit, a symbol of the island's natural heritage, reappeared after years of absence. Rare birds and frogs, once silenced by predation, reclaimed lost ground and filled the forest with their calls. The ecosystem showed remarkable resilience, healing as the pressure from invasive predators eased, lush greenery returned, and the web of life began to knit itself back together. The eradication program became a beacon of hope, inspiring conservationists and local communities alike. It was a testament to what determined action and collaboration could achieve. But then, an unexpected twist emerged. As mongooses vanished from the landscape, the population of the habu, a venomous snake native to the island, began to surge dramatically. Scientists soon realized that mongooses, despite their destructive impact, had been preying on juvenile habu snakes, subtly keeping their numbers in check. Without this predation, more young snakes survived. With the mongooses gone, a new generation of habu snakes thrived, growing in number and strength. The balance of the ecosystem shifted once again. The original problem, the habu, returned. Now stronger and more widespread than before, the island faced a resurgence of its old foe. Amami now confronted a new reality. The habu had become the island's apex predator, dominating the food chain and reshaping the ecosystem. The cycle had come full circle with nature reclaiming its own unpredictable path. The unintended consequences of human intervention were undeniable, leaving scientists and conservationists to grapple with new challenges. In the end, nature's complexity had outwitted even the best laid human plans, reminding us that every action in an ecosystem can have far-reaching and unexpected effects. Amami Oshima's story is a cautionary tale about simple solutions to complex problems. Releasing a snake killer was well-intentioned but disastrously incomplete in understanding. Ecosystems are intricate webs, one change can unravel everything. The financial and ecological costs have been immense. Some species are recovering but scars remain. Prevention is always better than cure. Today the focus is on coexistence, education, medical care, and habitat management. The people of Amami are learning to live with the habu, not conquer it. The tale warns against quick fixes for environmental challenges. Amami's slow recovery is a testament to nature's resilience and human humility. We are not masters of nature but a part of it. Attempts to control it often lead to losing control completely.